live from Austin, Texas, where all that glitters is U.S. gold, and only shooting stars break the U.S. mold. It's Retro Pals with Danny and Alex. Hi, Alex. Alternate intro, it's U.S. gold in the D. Thank you, Blab, for that Th one. Thank you, Blab. Uh, I, uh... <laughs> Uh, I'm out. I, I'm uh, hi Danny. Hi Danny. <laughs> wow, I really caught you off guard yeah, with that one. Yeah, huh? really did a good job with that. Uh, it's always a good show when I manage to flummox Alex right off the bat. <laughs> That's usually not what happens. So we got a show here for you today. Mm -hmm. Welcome. I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be one of our catalog exploration streams, so expect a lightning round style uh, tear through U.S. gold this week. Whether you think they're good or bad, we are going to cover them in full on the U.S. Sega Master System and Sega Genesis. Hell, let's do UK too. I'm feeling generous. Why not? Yeah, throw Why it not? on in. Everyone, join the party. Everyone except the, anyone who works at U.S. Gold, you're not welcome. That, that doesn't seem nice. Alright, so show the poll results. This week, I needed some suggestions from the Discord. So thanks to everyone who gave us suggestions for the um, the the publishers and developers we would spotlight. Mm -hmm. Somehow, somehow, U.S. Gold ended up winning by one vote. One fucking. This vote. Is, this was an honest surprise. So make sure you uh, fill that out on your Retro Pals bingo card. <laughs> All weekend, the other two were in a dead heat, and then come Monday noon, I check and U.S. Gold is ahead by one vote. They managed to <laughs> infiltrate the vote somehow. <laughs> uh, I'll be looking into possible rigging. I'll prosecute as necessary. No, don't! But for now, I think we need to play some U.S. Gold games. So U.S. Gold, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. uh, they released a few games. You may have played them. Uh, if you're familiar with them, though, you probably have a different opinion of them. There's a word for the uh, worldwide feeling toward U.S. Gold, and that feeling is antipathy. You talk to any person in the UK who's familiar with their output, and they're going to be like, oh, U.S. gold. To indicate this, uh, I took a screenshot of their Wikipedia page. It fits on one page. That's it. One page. Now think of all the other video game developer and publisher Wikipedia pages you've seen, with like history, related developers, uh, different parts of their history and, and acquisitions, perhaps a full list of all the games they made. I mean, U.S. Gold made literally hundreds of them, more than 500 <laughs> at the very least. I can't get over that game's published list. That and is... yet some guy took the time to write up two paragraphs, put six games, and was all like, ah, fuck it, it's just U.S. Gold. <laughs> And since then, no one else has bothered to step up to the plate and fix it. And you know what? That's what they deserve, pretty much. So to put it briefly, uh, or not so briefly, if you want the full story, look up U.S. Gold, The Complete Story on YouTube. It's a Kim Justice video. She that, does a great job of that summing up the history. Amazing. Yeah, the video is amazing. But essentially, this started up as a U.K. importer and distributor of U.S. computer games, uh, thus the name, U.S. Gold. They would import these really great and critically acclaimed games, make them playable to a new audience for the first time, and make their original developers a whole lot of money, and make people who play games happy for actually getting good games. Time progressed. They got bigger. Oh, they got so big. And they started making games for consoles. They started producing games in the U.S., which led to the confusing kind of thing where a U.K. publisher named U.S. Gold was publishing in the U.S., and these games were neither from the U.S. nor were they gold. <laughs> kind, of a, kind of a contradiction in terms. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, a whole lot of history. We'll go over it some tonight. But U.S. Gold had a prominent role on both the Sega Genesis and the Sega Master System. And since that won this week's poll, we're going to play all those dang games. I was going to do this chronologically, and I think after a point we're going to do that, but there's no point in holding off the inevitable. People want to see Strider Returns, so let's play some Strider Returns. All right. There he is! There's our boy! Oh, his hair looks much better than it does on the box art. In the box art, he has a nasty haircut. Well, that's because they just straight up ripped and reused the Strider arcade uh, sprite. Okay. <laughs> so this is not by Capcom. This is by Tiertex, who frequently ported arcade and console games to PCs in the UK. 
And like many of US Gold's games, this came out on so many platforms. This came out on ZX Spectrum, a bunch of computers, Master System, and Genesis. And the Genesis one got published over here as Strider Returns. Meanwhile in the UK they just straight up called it Strider 2. Just making you think, oh yes, Capcom put out another Strider game, it's a sequel. Go play it, it's probably real good. But is it real good? No, I'm sorry. I, I, I saw a little bit of it and I don't know about this. But you're the big Strider fan, so your opinion is what's going to be. I am. Yeah. I love Strider. I've never played much of this, so this will be quite the experience. Strider. <laughs> They're trying to be so cool, I love them. It's a shoot button? Yeah, for, for Striders, like, you know. Very, very quiet. You will learn to third me one day. <laughs> Alright. Well, can't argue with that. Let's start her up. Oh boy. Okay. Well, that's a great way to start the game. Absolute worst sound effects, I just want to say. Let me mention this is on original Genesis hardware, as usual. This is not a, a fucked up emulator. The game really sounds like this. So if you've played Arcade and then the Genesis port of Strider, you probably know it because it's a very fast game. You go through all these different environments at breakneck speed, you're very agile, you can climb up on walls and ceilings. Here, Strider kind of controls like he's just eating a big old pot of spaghetti, I guess. <laughs> he's, he's full, he's kind of just lethargic, he's feeling it. Tree branches break under his weight. He's just had a massive pile of lasagna and he's too tired. Had one of those two kilogram lasagnas I've heard so much about. <laughs> Poor guy. And he just kind of hangs in midair once you jump. Let's see, uh, Chad says he's cosplaying as a middle-aged uh, Peter Pan. <laughs> oh yeah, the Strider on the box art is pretty good too. Make sure you get a look at that if you haven't. So what this is, is taking Strider's graphics and gameplay style and squeezing them into an insipid UK platformer. Just the most generic computer platformer you can think of. And it's really confusing, like it hurts your brain to think, because it looks like Strider. To a degree it plays like Strider. But the level design and just the way the game is overall is definitely not Strider. But hey, maybe this is secretly a good game. Maybe it just bears the brunt of expectations. Watch out, Strider. A garbage can exploded all over you. <laughs> oh, it's a space garbage can, though. I like that the entire HUD is rendered in desert chrome. Have you noticed that? <laughs> yeah, wow! <laughs> I saw uh, Codeman calling it a uh, deluxe Deluxe Paint uh, default font. Uh, yes, vibe. that's pretty much it. I like how the game slows down dramatically when you swing your sword. That's really cool. Makes you feel powerful. Also, don't remember Killer Plants in the original Strider, but maybe that's just me. Maybe I haven't played it enough. <laughs> Sneakernet says he walks uh, like he's lost an argument, but he won't admit it. Ooh, this animation. I think they cut out a frame or two there. I guess in some ways they improve the control, because you can actually move left and right when you do a jump straight up. But he otherwise he's still so sluggish, it doesn't really have any effect. Rip. I can also see the argument that this was a good game on UK computers. So when he slid there, I was holding right and pushing jump, and he <laughs> slid to the left. He just kept sliding! Uh, multiple people in chat have asked, what does the orb meter do? Oh, good question! Uh, I actually don't know. Oh shit. It's got, it's got ninja stars in this one. I don't... I, if anyone knows how to activate orb, please feel free to fill me in. Yeah, we, uh... Oh, my God. 
I'm hearing claims in chat that this game sucked on all systems. <laughs> so, so even even from the perspective of it being a ZX Spectrum game, it was still bad. Damn. I'm noticing every time he gets hit, he starts rolling, and he does not stop for a good couple seconds. He just goes. Now you do get a bunch of power-ups in this game that I don't know what they do. And there's parts that are similar to what was in the original Strider, like those little whirly blades on the wall. But boy, did they ever miss the mark, especially calling it Strider 2. That was just pure hubris right there. It is wild that you've got four orbs in your orb meter, but no way to orb them out. I can't orb! <laughs> Maybe it's a... No? All I want to do is orb. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's a cool thing to do. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a cool thing to do in level one. I apologize for laughing at your suffering. That's... I thought about practicing this, but I thought it might be more fun to experience this look for the first time. <laughs> you lose your health fast. You sure do. Wait, how am I supposed to climb down this? Okay, I think I got an idea. Sheesh. Now, I gotta mention, this wasn't unusual in the UK at the time. Uh, the Renegade series went through something similar on uh, UK microcomputers. They made sequels to it. Uh, they released Renegade 2, which later came to NES as Target Renegade. But it eventually got so ridiculous it resulted in Renegade 3, where it has the same people who were in the original game, but now they're fighting cavemen and dinosaurs. It's that game. I'm really fascinated by UK-specific sequels to, to Japanese games. Like, some parts they get, and some parts they just didn't quite get the memo. Thank you to I asked for the resub. Uh, they say, I asked says, Alan Trigger presents Flippy Flappy Man... Sorry, Flippy Man Returns, not Flippy <laughs> Flappy. I don't know Basically, why. Basically, thank you. Flippy Flappy Man. I guess it's Flippy Flappy now? Uh... Oh, are these my orbs? Oh, it's Solo! Cool! He's from the first game. Oh, he's cool! Get him! Get him! I guess your orbs only show up during a boss fight? <laughs> That's pretty weird. Please don't put me back. Alright, good. And my orbs are restored. Oh, good. I'm restored. Danny! Okay, I see what's happening there. You can usually duck under that attack, but if he embeds himself in the floor, you can't. Because he, he does a little bit lower. That's not good. And if you try to jump while you're tumbling from a hit, you will slide. That's why I ended up sliding the other way. This game is fascinating. Hmm. Uh, thank you, Smevel, for the 24-month uh, resub, and they resub with a message, Pride Flag, Cookie Glare, Pride Flags. So nice, you know thank you. Good. Also, thank you to Laserbelt for the six-month resub. Uh, they ask you us to use our sewer slide technique. <laughs> is that what it's called? <laughs> That's what it's called now. I bet it is. All right, you can get him. You got this, Danny. This week, a uh, friend of the show, Tepid Snake, posted uh, a plot synopsis of the Ninja Warriors. <gasps> that being uh, the UK computer version. And it was all like... You're Mulk, and you gotta stop this bad boy Bangler from messing up your town, or something like that. It was very good. I know they referred to politicians as major geeks or yeah, something. Yeah, that was good. I, yeah, feeling it, feeling it. Major geeks. Uh, this game gives you a lot of lives, I think. Uh, Danny's, you've died a lot and you're still here. I hear this game has voices after you beat every level, so okay. I'm looking forward to this. I have you now. Never, my friend. <laughs> Tomorrow is the day you die. A lot of reused graphics from the arcade game. They just straight up lifted those. But I mean, why make new stuff when you already have the formula? You just gotta do the, uh, gotta do the level design. Thank you to Technodrum X 90 bits to say it's me again paying shout out for shout outs to my wife. I love you, Melody. Oh, thank you. Well, shout out to Melody. 
No shout-outs to Strider for starring in this. Absolutely not. He should have known better. How could he do Capcom like that? <laughs> you can't jump out of the tumble, so you end up just kind of tumbling off everything when you get hit. turns you into a very timid Strider because you're afraid of bumping bumping into anything. And Strider is not timid. Oh, what is this? This animation frame is new. <laughs> and it looks like shit. Ah, oh, it looks crap. That's right, crap, mate. Alright, that's a thing. Okay, let's do one more continue and then I think we'll move on. But this is one of the more prominent US Gold failures that's known to American players. I can only imagine how many people didn't read game magazines and were suckered in by this game, just thinking, wow, Strider 2, amazing! Alright, uh, chat earlier said, uh, that Strider looks like he has to pee, he got out of a hospital, uh, he is drunk at 1am, stumbling over his furniture. <laughs> All very likely, yeah. No, 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 no! No! <laughs> this was not a problem in the original Strider. <laughs> This time anything's anytime something so much as sneezes on him, he's all like tumble tumble tumble. <laughs> oh no, I'm kind of liking the shitty strider who just He is a shitty strider. Maybe this isn't Hear You. Maybe this is his brother, uh, Larry. They call him Hinjo? Hinjo? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if it's not Hear You, that makes more sense. <laughs> Here you uh, here he's here he's fail cousin Hinjo. Ah, uh, this must be another Gallagher situation. <laughs> yeah, except but, but I mean, so you're saying that uh, Strider's parents hate him but love uh, Hinjo? Yeah. How often do we bring up the Gallagher Gallagher tooth situation on this stream? Until everyone knows the facts. I'm sick of all these uneducated Gallagher fans spouting off. <laughs> I've I've already had enough of this game. I've been playing it for what, five minutes? Feels uh, like an hour. A yeah, a little bit longer than five, so I think it is I actually do think it's time to move on. You think so? Okay. We have like a billion games to get to. Alright, yeah. well before we get to the uh, the lightning round format, I'm gonna show off one other major failure on the Genesis you may have played. So y'all like Indiana Jones, you know, the guy with the hat, uh, he looks kind of dusty, mm -hmm. played by Harrison Ford. That's a great description of Indiana Jones. Anyway, here you go. <laughs> so U.S. Gold made a lot of money on this game, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. That's because they made the game once and then ported it to about a billion different platforms. And it's the exact same game on ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64. There's an NES version that the Angry Video Game Nerd famously uh, covered. Mm -hmm. And they also released it for the Sega Genesis. And Game Gear. And Game Boy. And, well, you know. Thank you, Scarlet Swordfish, for the six-month resub. Scarlet says, Strider 2, stry harder. <laughs> he should have stried harder. <laughs> you gotta stry. Maybe he would, he would just stride a little less. Let's find that cross. So, people who watch Macaw's 45 stream, uh, you may remember this. He went through this entire game, and he hated every second of it. And if you know Macaw, his stream is all about, Oh, dude, this game's so good! It's actually great! Why do people hate this? So, for him to hate a game, that kind of takes a lot. That's, yeah, I don't think I've ever really seen him hate hate a game. <laughs> what the f Okay, okay, I, did, I couldn't even tell what happened! I couldn't either. Oh, this control's way worse than I ever thought. The chat mentioning the la the title Last Crusader game and the point and click uh, Indiana Jones game. Those are good. Those are better. Yeah, this is. Yeah, the weird thing about the NES is it actually had two different uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade games, both called Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and both using the same cover art even, but they're from different companies. I remember that. Oh my god, I thought. I thought I 
was just a dumbass. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. One of them's way more rare than the other one too. I forget which. Oh, that blows. Look. What? Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you telling me I can't whip Nathan Drake's grandpa from this this range? <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> So You're... just just from the first two games, I'm starting to see uh, a certain common quality among U.S. Gold games. The controls are bad in a way that you can't really describe. Like, this feels almost innovative in how bad it is. <laughs> Shit like, what are you... Yeah, okay, you can keep jumping if you just hold the jump button. Mm -hmm. And yet there's fall damage. And the knockback sometimes throws you into enemy hitboxes for whatever reason. And yes, we did just kill that enemy by falling on his head earlier. I'm gonna do that again. Okay. Wow, that actually worked really well. <laughs> I'm just imagining Harrison Ford sliding down a rope and like slamming on someone's neck. It's <laughs> yeah. awful. But here's the craziest thing about US Gold. Uh, these business practices they did, these shortcuts they took, made them very, very successful. Like, if you look up all the other documentaries on Kim Justice's channel about uh, UK publishers and developers, they're all... The, the common thread is that they all flare out spectacularly, like... Wait. Look at my life bar. You can bonk your head. <laughs> you have concussion damage from hitting your head! So, many UK developers and publishers flare out, either like dramatically during the shooting of, of a documentary, like the, the, the place closes, or like the founder dies and it's revealed that he's hundreds of millions in debt. Here, US Gold, they were just successful. They made lots and lots of money until late 90s where they were acquired by IDOS. And that's the end of their story. No drama, no, no stories of obscene failure. They were just extremely successful. And these are the kind of games they made. Yeah, because like, God, I've been, I, I watch, I've watched a lot of uh, Kim Justice videos about these UK companies, and most of them is just, it's kind of fucking sad. It is, yeah. <laughs> I forget which one it was, but yeah, one of them did actually have a documentary filming about the the uh, publisher's formation, but then the uh, the bankruptcy court foreclosed during the documentary shooting, which was really hardcore. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> hey, you got a high score. I get to continue from the start of the level. Oh no, from here. Good. Another thing about US Gold is they had the weirdest start of any of those publishers and they ended so normally. Like, I think the story was the founder was almost a rock star, but missed his spot on top of the pops due to Elvis dying that week, so he never got famous. So he, he parlayed his experience in the music industry to become a math teacher. Mm -hmm. And he turned into a huge nerd, uh, a nerd who programmed games and tested them out, out, out in the students. Oh, very, very uh, ethical there. And he eventually became such a huge, huge nerd, he started sending off for games that were offered in uh, UK computer magazines, like importing them from the States. And he thought, you know what? I bet other people over here would enjoy this too. So he became a distributor. And that's the story. <laughs> no, no major flare out, no drama, just... Look at, look at Andy! What?! <laughs> Excuse me?! <laughs> it kind of pains me to say how successful they were while playing this, because... I mean... Imagine if Elvis hadn't died. If Elvis hadn't died, there wouldn't be a US Gold and we wouldn't have this. Let's try this again. <laughs> okay. I, want you, I want you to appreciate how he throws his hands up in the air like Bubsy. Ooh. Let's try that again. You got this. Oh, I hit my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Two feet of water! Watch out, Indy! Indy's danger. Most deadly enemy to date. Water. Why did it have to be water? <laughs> Sorry. This game's amazing, <laughs> and it's just as bad on every platform that it's on. Oh, I'm crying. 
Oh, I want to give this one more life. Okay, are you? I feel cheated by this game. Yes. We've all we've spent thirty minutes already. <laughs> okay, so these are the biggest misses for uh, U.S. gold here in the states, by my estimation. These games were extremely popular and they made money, but I mean, look at them. I literally don't know how to get out of that. That's cool. <laughs> I guess it'll remain a mystery for the rest of time. I'm sorry. Okay, so the rest of tonight's stream will do, be divided up into two halves. We're going to do Sega Genesis, and then we're going to do an attempt at a redemption arc with the Sega Master System. I've never played a good U.S. Gold game on the Genesis. I hope to find at least one. Let's start off in 92, where alongside Indiana Jones, they also released a game called U.S. Gold. I mean, um, Olympic Gold. <laughs> Olympic Gold from U.S. Gold. I hate that. Oh, with the kind permission. That's so nice of them. Look at all these shitty Olympics that aren't the 1992 Olympics. Amsterdam, that sucked. Los Angeles, go to hell. To be fair, the St. Louis, oh, the Berlin Olympics and the St. Louis Olympics did kind of suck. Wow, there was a big honest. gap in the Olympics for a while there. Wonder what happened. Ah, uh, nothing. You're, don't, don't ask. I uh, probably didn't miss anything. Anyway, it's Barcelona time. Now I have actually heard that this game is supposed to be decent, so let's let's just see for ourselves. I am D dead. No wait. Jay Hancock. Cool. You're all those guys. Oh, 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 He's oh. He's gonna oh. light it. Yay. There it is. Enjoy right. your Olympics, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, US Gold did release Issy, and we will be going into. That. Oh, the doves! They almost no. they almost flew right into the flame. I was gonna say, no, don't! <laughs> Like birds to the flame. Oh god, here we go. I'm guessing this is a button basher, as they call him. My guy didn't hear the, the thing. You're like, shit, shit, shit! I, I slept in! I slept in! What is this, alternating A and B? Okay, that's what it is. If you try to hit just one, you won't do it. Oh, that sucks. Oh, I'm so sorry. They could at least brief you. Like, hey, dummy, push A and B. Well, you're an Olympian, you should know this. Yeah, but... Okay, I got it this time for sure. Yeah, here we go. There you go, there go Danny, go. go! Oh, the Olympic gold is mine! Mine! What country are you representing? Uh, Fra. I win. Come on, Fra. Oh, shit, you did good. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do this heat. Okay. I guess it's kind of hard to mess up a uh, track and field ripoff, huh? Mm -hmm. There's no opportunity for the players to, to bump their heads on the ceiling. <laughs> or get thrown out of a minecart. There are no ceilings in minecarts in uh, the Olympics. Uh. Uh. Are you... Start button? Well. That's Olympic gold. I assume there's more events. Oh yeah, now the controller works. But you think it was because it was a six foot button? Could be. Mm. See, I like soccer, aka footy, football, football. Oh, it's more tier tags. Oh look. my god, look at all those companies. That is just a smear of companies oh, down look there. Look at the aliasing on the jitteriness on Amco. I love it. Oh good, this is the time in uh, UK design when they figured words sucked, so all the menus were just pictographs. And you had to magically know what they all meant. Well, to be fair, words do suck. Yeah. Let's, let's be honest. You're just like, ah, oh, words don't mean anything. Everyone will figure out these visuals. Don't ask, it's fine. Alright, Manchester. A radar that takes up 30% of the screen. Oh my god, that radar! Well, I will say, at any point, you know where everyone on the field is. That's true, JP Ronnie. Sensible Soccer did use text, so I don't know what their problem was. But oh, this one's got so replay. Oh! Oh, that's cool. Alright, you know what? I will admit, that is cool. 
And this, this does seem pretty similar to the sensible soccer formula, which was pretty popular at the time. Characters need to be smaller, though. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is soccer, and we're going to see a lot of it. How about golf? Oh, you don't need to keep doing that. Right. I'm going to be going really fast. Okay, well. <laughs> sports games, I'm just going to kind of blaze past because, you know, no one plays sports. Golf. Oh, it's a golf game, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you said that. Oh, oh, no. Boy, talk about presentation. Look at this menu. Straight out of DOS. The gauntlet, they call this hole. Okay, so you scale the map instead of the actual gameplay. That's a way to do it, I guess. And it's not a three-button press, it's a hold and press, and then a let go, and then you press again. The tree, Jim? The tree, Jim? <laughs> yeah, it said it looks like you hit the tree, Jim. It's pretty weird. Oh my god, where's it going? Ball is in parking lot. <laughs> I'll hit that green. Looks like he hit the tree, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> That's U.S. Gold in 1992. 1993, meanwhile, they released Strider Returns and, oh, a game called Flashback. Is, I wonder what this is. Is this good? Is this good, Jim? Sit in the trees, Jim. So y'all played Flashback. I bet a few of you have. It's from Delphine, and it's kind of a spiritual successor to a game called Out of This World, or Another World in the UK. And the general consensus is, yeah, this game is in fact really good. They advertise it as being a CD game on cartridge based on these cutscenes. Which do look good. Mm -hmm. These look great. These still look great. <laughs> Never played this game and you're so mad about it. Well, fix that! Play it! It's pretty good! I rented this back in the day. I didn't get far, but... It wasn't a pile of crap, like every other US Gold game was. I'm sorry, I should be more positive. Be, be po be, we we want to be US Gold positive in this house. I've got that big sign I got from uh, Michaels that says, In this house, we support US Gold. Uh, do Try not to... denigrate UK computers. Trying so hard to think of a US gold standard joke, but coming up empty. Pure strain US gold. There we go. That's good. So this game is a lot like Out of This World. You have a rotoscoped looking character who has a whole lot of frames of animation. He can roll around. He has a gun. And you left a message for yourself here. Now, this was also on Sega CD, so if you're going to play this, you might want to just play that version. How to what? There we go. Yeah. You left a cube for yourself to explain the plot. That's quiet. Now, see, I think the plot is you've lost your memory, so you left something to remind yourself, but... Your past self is a real asshole about talking to your present self. <laughs> like, if I was doing this, I would skip the cleverness and just go for clarity, but that's not how Conrad goes. Imagine recording a hologram of yourself being like, Well, you got yourself into a real pickle this time, didn't you? I bet you don't even remember who you are. Hey, eh, ass you'll find out. <laughs> hey, asshole, what's your problem? <laughs> Can't remember yourself? Eat shit. Watch your back, it's my life you're playing with. Oh my god. And from here, you gotta do a whole lot of Prince of persia pretty much. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is very Prince of Persia-esque in that way. But you know what? This game actually works well. It is pretty darn good, especially if you can figure out how to get up. It's been a long time since I've played this. 
I guess we will be eventually covering this on Sega CD Monday, so look forward to that at some point. Look at the frames of animation just on drawing the gun and crouching and stuff. It's so nice looking. Oops. <laughs> Danny! <laughs> Moving on to our next game. Mm -hmm. Flashback is good. Uh, you probably already know that. If you don't, play it. It's quite decent. We also have something like 30 to 40 games to get through, so, so let's, get moving. let's motor. 94, they released a bunch of games for Genesis. This is actually a Mega Drive UK exclusive. This was not released in the States. Ah, fuck! Stop Jesus! It. Ow! This intro kicked my ass. This intro wants me fucking dead. Wait, Genesis design? But this only came out in the U. Well, whatever. Look at that controller. That looks cool. That looks like Core Design's logo. Kinda does. Everything had to be Desert Chrome back then. Also, speaking of Core Design, uh, Electric Boogaloo mentioned that US Gold was so popular they were actually able to buy Core at one point. So. Dang. Who's this cool guy? I love the simulated walking. <laughs> Me too! You call this a walking simulator? Yeah. That's right, uh, US Gold's eventual fate was to be bought by IDOS. Uh, right before that, they were set to publish Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider was almost a US Gold game. Excuse me? Uh -huh. I, I think you told me that earlier today, and it, it didn't register because that doesn't make any sense to me, but... It almost happened. Sheesh. So it's a strategy game. Yeah, looks like it. Objective must be last waypoint. Can I can I just fly the fucking plane, maybe? There, we go here and here and here and here and here. How about that? How's that for no a waypoint? No waypoint, we need to navigate. Alright, well, Gunship is a game that doesn't want you to play it. It's not well suited to a lightning round format, mm -mm. and it will vex you and waste everyone's time. All right, uh, it's click the big red flag is what you're supposed to do. My highest possible recommendation. <laughs> Chat's just going big flag, big flag. I don't notice big flags. Come on. Gunship was also released for Turbo Graphics, I think. I think it's just some kind of military simulator. Based on a Deke property. Yes, this is the Hurricanes. So there were several games, it was an odd platformer subgenre for a while, a game where you control a character who has a soccer ball. Oh, based off of the... Wow, they gave this a, a Look at that. game? Look at those Deke-ass character designs right that there. That is so Deke! Wow. Alright, so, y'all, what's your favorite soccer-based platformer? Is it Marco's Magic Football? Is it Soccer Kid? Oh my god! <laughs> or is it the Hurricanes featuring Winston Honeychurch? This this man's mustache. Hmm, looking good. Hmm, how about you? You? You want to go in? All right, let's go. Let's play some soccer. This is. Believe it or not, this was a UK exclusive. Are you? A jumps. C shoots the soccer ball, so it's on the other side of the controller. She's kicking her armadillo. Uh huh. Hmm. Oh. Wow. I was wondering how I knew this music immediately, and then I remembered this was recently on Cuso Grande. <laughs> Not a very well received this... game among them, I don't believe. Okay, uh, according to Bob and Ear, this is from the creators of Johnny Bazooka Tone. So. Ooh, Arc Developments, my nemesis. Yeah, unfortunately, we won't be seeing Johnny Bazooka Tone tonight because it wasn't no. on Genesis, but no, that I was also... quite a terrible game if you want to see the Mascot Friday episode of that. Also, if I recall, I just generally banned him from the show. Yeah, he sucks. <laughs> Plus, he besmirched the name of uh, Hall & Oates, so fuck him. Oh, wow. The ball can pop? Yeah, look at <laughs> that. At least, at least, unlike some of the other games, it, it, it like just gives you immediately like a new ball. That is nice. Unlike Soccer Kid, where you had to go hunt the thing down, and it was just annoying. Wait, do armadillos and gorillas inhabit the same biosphere? 
Uh, sure. All right, cool. And they're all weak to footballs. Hmm. Isn't it just... Oh, I'm just imagining Chem, sorry. I'm imagining Jane Goodall playing soccer and all the gorillas running for fear. And she's like, no, no, I won't hurt you. <laughs> and then she gets a soccer ball in the face. <laughs> Can anyone explain that particular time in history where everyone needed to make a soccer platformer? <laughs> was it some consultancy firm just giving everyone the same advice? Was it just everyone had the same bad idea at once? Well... <laughs> oh, they gave me a yellow card for dying. <laughs> <laughs> now, this was also on Super Nintendo, and here's the most fucked up thing about that. That one ver that version came out in the U.S. There's actually a U.S. version of Hurricanes for Super Nintendo, and it's very rare. I think a red card uh, is for when someone else, uh, when you kill someone else instead of what if you die. It must be for when the whole team dies or something. Flying squirrels are your enemy in this game. That is so. That's just not right. Yeah, they should definitely be your friends. Rocky would never. <laughs> this is not great. Yeah, US Gold Games not typically known for their music. Oh yeah, and I yeah I do remember when the World Cup was in uh, L.A. in the 90s. I think it was like, what was that, 92, 94? Oh, 94, I think. That might have been it. Yeah, they were trying to capitalize on World Cup, most likely. I remember there was a big push for the World Cup around that time. I remember there was also like that mascot that was a cool dog. Oh Whatever. yeah, that guy. Whatever happened to that dog? Is that dog doing alright? He's doing okay. Oh, good. They licensed him for uh, the World Cup pinball release for Pinball Arcade. Oh, wonderful! So he's still getting work. Oh, I'm so happy. That Pinball World Cup game is a Pat Lawler game, by the way. It's really good. That's nice. This is, uh, less good. Why the f- Uh, we've entered the world of Tasmania, apparently. I was gonna say, is this- Oh, Karnov, no. Karnov with a gun? What the fuck is this? This is, it looks like, it, it reminds me of the Flintstones. Oh, this is the Flintstones. It's the Flintstones, but they have weaponry. <laughs> it fucking sucks. Maybe I was wrong about this game. Maybe this is awesome. Oh, man. JP Ronnie mentions this cartoon was produced by Scottish television, uh, ITV's uh, Glasgow studio in particular. Wow. Well, there's a future candidate for Mascot Friday, the Hurricanes. Uh, start thinking now about whether you think this is better or worse than Bubsy. Mm. For now, we'll move on. No, that means I'm gonna have to play it. Speaking of Mascot Friday, here's a game we played recently. The Incredible Hulk. Ah, uh, correction about the dog. Apparently they didn't get the world... Wow, sorry. I'll, I'll... Okay, oh, did they not get the rights to the dog? No, so they had to change the dog slightly. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's cool that they had to do that. Yeah, uh, for reference, Farsight had to get all the actor license likenesses for the Adams Family uh, pinball table, except Christopher Lloyd, so they had to draw a really weird looking Uncle Fester. <laughs> and I guess they couldn't get the dog rights for similar reasons. They don't license some of that shit, like, if it's any. Ugh. Oh, I hate that! Oh! It's another shot of Hulk's feet for all you Hulk feet fans. Stop it! Oh, uh, BBH mentions they may not have gotten Pugs Pugsley either, so... Oh, really? Dang. Yeah, they even managed to get Angelica Houston and uh, Raul Julia, but not Pugsley, the great movie star. Watch Pugsley be like Johnny Depp or something. So this was a weird release for 94. This is a very early 90s feeling side-scroller that was kind of going out of vogue when this came out. And it, it's real hard to control sometimes. I forget where we ranked this. Was this better or worse? I'm pretty sure this was worse. Well, you gotta appreciate the strut in any case. I do like the strut. The strut is very nice. 
as a walk around like you own the place, Strut. And see where it gets you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Moving on to another UK exclusive, Power Drive. Now, this one might actually be interesting. This one looks kind of neat. Didn't get this one here in the States, uh, but luckily it runs at 60 hertz native, so we can play this on a flash card. Oh, nice. Just rocket launchered right in the face. Gee. Rage software. Presence? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh wait now. Ah. Uh. This was rendered cars. We doing a Mini Cooper? I think we're doing a Mini Cooper. So this is an overhead view racer that reminds me not just a little bit of World Rally by Gaoko. Let me turn things down on our end. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting brain blasted here. Okay, here we go. Yeah, control-wise it's very similar. It tells you the turns that are coming up, like Gaoko's game. And it's pretty unusual because not many 16-bit platforms had this kind of racer released for it around the time they were aiming for simulation-style games. You're uh, Nigel Mansell, you're Mario Andretti, things like that. Chat's asking, uh, what's your Blombie rating for this car? This is about a 5 in Blombiness. I mean, it's not... The, the Blombiness isn't entirely absent, but it's only in measured quantities. Blombie car, of course, being a 10 out of 10. Of the course, it's the Blombiest you can get. This plays okay. Looks fun. <laughs> I love the way it spins. Eee! Oh, you gotta repair your car piece by piece. My spotlights, no! Alright, chat's calling this blombish, blimby, it's blob esque. A little, little blombish, yes. It's a blimby car. Now, I think it's kind of a shame that this was a UK exclusive because. The US Genesis library could have used a game like this. So many racers just feel dated nowadays because they were, you know, trying to simulate the perspective. The scaling looked real bad. But this takes a different approach, and the controls are really weird, especially compared to World Rally. But if it looks neat, try it out. Check it out, won't you? Yeah. At your local UK library. Just expect the music to kick your ass once you start the game, because I don't know why this game is so much louder than everything else. It's like the sound of your car blombying about. <laughs> blombying about? Let's move on. Okay. Oh, the Winter Olympic Games. Good. Oh, burr. <laughs> That's a great commentary you get from Alex. Alright, is this Olympic gold or uh, regional bronze? Rec Center Silver. <laughs> Aw, that's charming. I like this art style. Oh boy, oh, here we go. Oh, another one with a list of Leading all the way back through here. You really, you, like you really just gonna skip over the 1940s? Oh yeah, that's... wow. They, I guess they just took a couple years off. Let's start the game. Oh, this is cute. Okay. That's I a like, neat touch. I like the little smear on her flag when she uh, changes. It's yeah. nice. Oh, I love these characters. Are, are these like the mascots from the Lillehammer Olympics? Oh, I, maybe. I like them. They're I really adorable. It makes sense since they're uh, so prominently featured. I bet yeah. they are. They're good design. John Prince. No, John Prince is good. Let's go with that. Yeah, we're John. All right, here we go. Oh, come on. How are you supposed to do it from down there? Don't. Nobody's fooled, dude. I like it. What a sham. I I really like the aesthetics of this game. I'm really surprised. This looks a lot better than Olympic Gold. Oh yeah, Olympic Gold looked like crap. I'm sorry. Plus we get the superior winter sports. Mm-hmm. Like winter running and the winter long jump. <laughs> Alright, John Prince, let's go. 
let's go. John, John Prince died today at the Olympics. Sorry, John. I wanted to turn the other way, but instead he turned into the trees. <laughs> Tragic day for John. Anyway, next up is the luge. Oh god, John. Oh god, John. no, John, John don't! John, please, Go home please. and be with your family. You don't want, you don't want this. No, John, no. It's your turn, Johnny. There we go, the luge. The non-street luge. Oh, here we go. I can control this. You're doing good. Oh, this is very choppy. Same, you same know what I was saying little... about the bad scaling in racing games at the time? This is kind of like that. You're doing good. Alright, thank you to Abby for confirming that those were the official Lily Hammer mascots. They are Kristen and, uh, pardon me for this, uh, Hackon. Oh, okay. Hack cool. That's awesome. They're really well designed. Yeah. Good use of them, then. Yeah. They can really point to stuff. They are excellent pointers. Yeah, yeah. there was a bunch of Olympic games at the time. Whenever yeah. there was an Olympics, uh, US Gold was right there to make a game about it. Well, you're not eating shit, and for that I'm proud of you. Especially since this is fucking luge. Danny! <laughs> are you... Did you just... Did you just do that on purpose to poor John? I guess we'll never know. We'll no one will ever prove it. Okay. World Cup USA 94. Didn't we just have a World Cup? Well, we're having another one. Okay. Oh, we might see that dog you like so much. Oh boy, dog! <laughs> <laughs> and American Airlines! And American my favorite! Airlines. There, he, there is. he is! Oh, I love him! Oh, look at this furry guy! Oh, he's great! He's uh, got attitude. He looks like he's gonna sell me some chocolate milk. Fantastic. <laughs> Does a body good. It's like chocolate milk for like, but it's healthy now. It's like chocolate milk where they shoved in a bunch of protein and like superfoods. Well, this is by Tier Text, the creators of Strider Returns, so not much hope for this one. Yeah, yes, man, a real oggy doggy look to him. I can't believe this is the only Genesis game brought to you by American Airlines. <laughs> They had to bring us other games, right? Not even Aerobiz had the American Airlines license. Wait, is this is he not pointing? No. Oh come on. Question? Uh traffic cones? I think that's training. Cloning mode? That's when you play with someone else. Okay. I'm just gonna put it out there. Worst trend in UI in the nineties, getting rid of the words. Can you rename the U.S.? Okay, uh... Dogtown! Or whatever. <laughs> Good name. <laughs> we got Bad Place competing in the World Cup this year. Real glad to have him. Can't wait. I think it just let me rename the character, not the uh, the country, oh, unfortunately. The first soccer game to let me rename countries is going to be the one I play. And what do you know, it looks a whole lot like sensible soccer. <laughs> we do apologize for going political, we will stick to sports. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no, Wait, that has precedent. A, a soccer guy did that uh, last weekend. Did you say America was the bad place? Yeah, he, got, he grabbed the microphone and said, more like bad place. <laughs> So we're just following the trends, everybody. Yeah. Oh, American Airlines sponsorship back there. I see it. Coca-Cola Classic. You can run the ball into your own goal, that's cool. Did someone just fart? Yeah, the goalie ran into the goal and farted. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's soccer. Let's move it's on. fucking soccer. Well, we're almost to the end of the Genesis lineup, and we end in 1995 with one hell of a lineup. First is the UK exclusive soccer game, Fever Pitch Soccer. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish I had better commentary. I've been laughing, but... I mean, it's been a year. You need another soccer game, right? Let's be Canada. Canada versus Kuwait. The soccer showdown. Let's go. It's been brewing for decades. Oh wow, so it's not a sensible soccer ripoff, instead it's a FIFA ripoff. 
with brutal computer players, like, jeez. You just, that wasn't a goal save, that was just a trip. <laughs> yeah, I tripped on the ball. Well, if between 1994 and 1995 you decided that you needed another soccer game, U.S. Gold was more than happy to help. That dude kicked me in the ass! <laughs> I've Video never been more insulted! <laughs> Izzy's quest for the Olympic Greens! Oh, Izzy's never kicked a dude in the ass. <laughs> you don't know that! You don't think this guy's ever kicked a dude in the ass? Come on! That was the opposite of sensible. <laughs> That's, that's unsensible soccer. So, 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 here's another game we featured on Mascot Friday. Starring Izzy, aka What Is It, the formless mascot of the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta. Well, you don't know what he is. He doesn't even know what gender is, much less what she is, <laughs> whatever he is. But here he is, out to save the Olympic rings. Izzy, the ultimate ally. Oh my word. I forgot about this. Izzy's quest to eliminate gender. <laughs> I wish Izzy was that fucking cool. Um, I was gonna say, this reminds me of Pack in Time. Oh yeah, it does. It does have that look to it. <laughs> yeah, Izzy is no one's ally. So, we played this, and... It doesn't seem that bad until you start scrolling the screen, at which point the game just slows down a lot. This was also present on the Super Nintendo version, I believe, so there is no uh, definitive version of Izzy. Despite that, the game isn't terrible. It's not the worst game we played for Mascot Friday. I don't know why that wall has to have eyes and a mouth, though. It, it did. It just did. Just go with it, Danny. Okay. All right. Uh, so two things. Uh, thank you, uh, Loveless gave us 250 bits and said, "Izzy breaking the walls down for our non-binary friends." Well, <laughs> Thanks, thank Izzy. you, Izzy, but I wish it would have been Striker, the the mascot from the World Cup. But you know, take what you can get. Uh, I thought you were gonna go with Mortal Kombat, but <laughs> Striker's more like the gender enforcer. <laughs> he is. He's the mall cop who who he's the mall. Cop who misgenders you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been mis Anyway, if you if you if you're interested in seeing what we thought of Izzy, we did play this on Mascot Friday forever ago, so check that out. I guess we should start adding links to our Mascot Friday list so people can more uh, easily find what we think of these games. We are the definitive source. About Izzy? About Izzy. I, I don't know exactly about that. I've, I've seen some more definitiveness on Izzy, to be honest. Just look at the slowdown. Like, damn. Hella awesome possum style. Gugh. Framing from this. And finally... <laughs> did you say you needed another Olympics game? Yes! <laughs> well, here you go! Oh boy! Oh wait, is he was an Olympics game? Oh, it's a platformer, you're uh... This is different. So, suffice to say, licensing was a big, big deal back in the 90s. And some companies found a whole lot of money Oh, via the god Olympics. damn it! Okay, no, this looks awesome! That does look cool. What the hell? That looks great! They had to use some kind of, uh, raster effect for that, probably. That looks cool! Why is that here? I'm just disappointed they didn't uh, run down all the different Olympics that have existed. I go the Olympics that sucked. Here's the good Sharon. Sharon. I support you, Sharon. Remember when Sharon was going for the gold? Mm-hmm. Like Wendy's had that. Whoa! Hey. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wendy's was all like, get a kid's meal and uh, support Sharon. I, I, I remember that, and everyone was like, they had Sharon shirts, and uh, there was that whole, like, uh, <laughs> the whole Sharon fandom that fell apart. Oh, yeah. I blame the Sharon stands. Mm -hmm. The controversial uh, Sharon Wheaties box. What was controversial about it? <laughs> she was giving the finger and she wore a shirt that said, fuck cops. 
<laughs> wow, Sharon. Sharon was a little spicy back in the day, but we love her. All right, I will say this is a very breezy take on the Olympic sports genre because we've gone through a couple events in like a minute. Let's attempt. Oh, Sharon. Sharon, no. Oh, Sharon, no. <laughs> nope. <laughs> just, just decided not to. Let's try that one more time. Also, folks in chat wanted to press us and remind us about the bombing. Yes, there was a bombing at this Olympics. That oh, sucked. yeah, that did happen. Look that it up that dominated the news for like months after. Yeah, look, look it up in, in your local library. I actually made one. Did you see it? No, not that time. <laughs> okay, well, there's a worse way you could end U.S. Gold's reign of terror here in the States. Uh, what do we think? What are what are the opinions on U.S. Gold's catalog here in the U.S. of A.? Well, they had one interesting game, Flashback, a couple of uh, other games, and then just a billion sports games. Yeah, it felt like it was half Olympics and soccer games, and the other half was just the worst action games you've ever played in your life. Alright, chat calling it US 10, uh, Devil Bubsy for UK Gold. <laughs> <laughs> I have never as, loved anyone as much as I've loved Sharon. She, she's relatable. As for me, what you just saw represents my feelings on US Gold. Uh, Sharon. These are all wasted rentals, these games. Is he less so? Um, Power Drive, if it came out here, would be okay, but the rest, oh my god, the rest, why did that happen? Alright, I'm seeing U.S. Participation Award, uh, <laughs> I saw earlier U.S. Bronze, yeah, it's not... U.S. Pyrite. <laughs> okay, so, you know what I think about U.S. Gold, you know what anyone thought about these games, having played them back then. If you were into the Olympics, I guess they catered to you. I guess that was a thing. If you wanted one of the 50 billion soccer games that came out back then, they were also an option. Mm -hmm. But let's go back a little bit. Let's go back a couple years. Let's go back to the good old Sega Master System, which at the time, where we start up here in 1992, was basically dead here in the States. And yet it had a very active and somewhat rabid following in the UK, uh, leading a whole bunch of publishers to make games for it. Actually, let's go back even further to 1990. So check this out. Oh, it's Gauntlet. Now, before they got obsessed with the Olympics, oh U.S. Gold ended up publishing a whole lot of arcade ports for systems back then. Oh yeah, this is a little bit... Uh, a little bit different. The resolution's different. Who are we? Warrior, Valkyrie, Wizard, or Elf? Well, what's in your heart, honey? I want to be the wizard. Well, it's got voices! And sure, this came out many years after the NES port, and Gauntlet itself was very old, being a mid-80s arcade game. But this version? By my eyes, this looks pretty good. Like, the NES version kind of looked like a big piece of crap, if you've ever seen it in action, but... This seems to be pretty close to the arcade game. It's decently playable. It's fast, too. I like that. It's got the wizard. Yeah, you can be a wizard. They didn't bother adding music because the arcade game never had any. So that's accurate. This looks pretty good. Yeah. I think it's even two-player, too. Though, of course, not four-player. I guess if you wanted four-player, you could go to Gauntlet 2 on the NES. But this does not look like the games we just saw. <laughs> this looks like it had effort put into it. Which makes me think, US Gold's heart was really with the Sega Master System all along. And they never quite got that same momentum going with the, the Mega Drive or Genesis. But this is just one game. Let's play another one. Now this next one actually did get released in the States. Hell, let's play it right now. Paperboy. Oh, nice. Tapping like, these are real games. Yeah, that gauntlet, that looked like something that would be enjoyable. 
Alright, well this is programmed by tier text, so... Not much in the way of expectations there. Still, it looks a hell of a lot closer to the arcade game than the NES one did. That looks good. Okay. What is that dog? That dog had very little animation. That <laughs> dog in mange. Alright, this is kind of weird controlling, but it looks great. And the controls aren't a deal breaker or anything. I think you can get used to it. I think this music has mange too. Yeah, it's the first music with mange. Oh yeah, these are all UK and US games, so no FM sound for you FM sound heads. Sorry. Eh, they suck anyway. Paperboy is the game that teaches you how business works in the real world. Either you, people subscribe to you, or you break their windows. That's, that's true. I've had many, my, many, many times our windows get broken because we're not subscribed to the statesman. It, Paperboys around here are pissed. They are. They're like, the industry's dying! This is all we got left! This is your fault for not subscribing. Cancel your internet! <laughs> Newsies are always sabotaging our house. Like, we'll get you, mister! Yeah, that's one of the things they don't tell you about Austin, all the roving bands of Newsies. What's over here? Who knows? It's hard to see. Wait, did I just get through that level without crashing? Yeah. Maybe this is good. It feels okay. Must be another fluke. Let's keep going. Yeah. This is this is U.S. Gold we're talking about. Indiana Jones, Strider Returns. Hell, let's play that Indiana Jones game let's again. Let's try it. <laughs> that was pretty good. Not so sure about that theme. Again, a lot of the U.S. Gold music sounds sick. Like, I want to give it... Not sick as in good, but sick as in, like, ill. I, yeah, sick as in I want to give it uh, ginger ale and uh, oh, set it boy. in bed. I don't know about this one. Well, let's see. <laughs> Dude. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, no music. Oh, yeah, there is no music. That's weird. On first glance, this looks, <laughs> this looks better than the other one. But... It does! The characters look more detailed, don't they? Mm hmm But this is 8-bit. You still get head damage? No! Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you, you do. do. Okay. They had to keep that in. Of course, it's the classic indie maneuver. That's what everyone remembers about indie, all the head injuries. Indy shot to death in a cave. Your whip had no range! Yeah, it didn't do shit against the gun. Well, we have the whip now, so let's keep going. It's hard to say whether this is better than the Genesis one. I'm gonna go with no. Maybe that's just preconceptions, though. Mm -hmm. If anyone has played this, please feel free to let me know if this is the definitive port. No, oh, don't jump. You bonk your head, it costs you energy. Maybe the definitive version is on the Spectrum or something. Alright, you've got 18 seconds left. Wait, what? Well, oh, that guy... No seconds left. That guy generated the fuck out of me. He just walked into you like nothing. <laughs> yeah, it has... <laughs> there's no invincibility frames in this one. You just lose all your health when you come in contact with something. So this is fucked up, but in a different way. The dude throwing a knife sounds like he's launching a rocket. It does! Alright, Chad <laughs> says, this sucks too. Yeah, it also sucks. Uh, it also sucks on Game Gear, I can confirm that. Probably all the other systems it's on. Let's try and actually beat this guy this time. Oh, we have 22 seconds left. Okay, hurry Danny, hurry. Oh, you, you murdered him, great. 
Good. All right. I don't think that's enough time, U.S. Gold. <laughs> I think that time limit is a little bit too stringent. Maybe that's just me, though. <laughs> My god. And finally, let's finish up the year 1990 with Impossible Mission. I also had Strider in there because I suspected it was the tier tax port, but I don't think it is. I think that was a Sega production. Mm. This one comes from computers. If fuck excuse me? What did you think he said? Play ball. Also, uh, <laughs> SMS Strider was Sega published, but Tiertex did develop it. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we should take a look at that then. Alright, so this comes from the days of the C64. It's a side-scrolling action game where you gotta look at stuff and dodge robots. That's what all video games were like back then. The good old days. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're familiar with other Master System games, you may think of this as an alternative to Zillion. In fact, this looks a hell of a lot like Zillion. Yeah, I was gonna say this reminded me of Zillion. I wanna say this game also came out on NES, but it was unlicensed. And yeah, what you've seen of the gameplay is basically all of it. Dodge the robots, get the codes, uh, fire up the lifts, or whatever. Get disintegrated. And get disintegrated over and over again. So, not all bad. For a first year, I'd say that's a pretty good showing for the Master System. Let's see what Strider's like very briefly. Yeah, it's weird because the title screen on this, if I remember right, it says Reprogrammed Game by Sega. There it is. Never? Hmm. Wow, everyone loves this master. He must be a cool guy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh no. Hmm. You know, like I said, I this didn't feel like a Sega game, and knowing this is the tier text version makes this make a lot more sense. That jump! Yeah, he really hangs in the air. He's so slow, I love him. He's a floaty guy, this Strider. The sound design is oppressive. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm protesting about. I mean... At least now we can better appreciate Strider Returns. Mm -hmm. An effort was made. I don't know if it was much effort, though. Oh, apparently, uh, Corneal Electric Boogaloo Tier Text also did a uh, Turbo Outrun for the Mega Drive. Woof, I hear that's not a good port. Yeah. This kind of resembles the arcade game. It follows the basic flow of the first level. I wonder if I can get to the boss. That would be a hell of a thing. What do you think that centipede guy looks like on the Master System? Oh my god. I, uh, monstrous, but... <laughs> oh, 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 man. It's the way you hang when you jump. Oh. Well, US Gold could do good on their own, but if Tiertex was involved, you're probably not going to have a good time. You're right, I'm never going to defeat the Master. Still, overall, not bad. Not bad at all, especially compared to what we saw in Genesis. 91 rolled around. And here we have a game called Heroes of the Lance, which I've never played. Ah, oh, it's a dragon game. 
Mm hmm. Advanced dragons. Gold moon. Sturm. Sturm. I don't know. Reistlin. Tannis. <laughs> you think that's someone named, like, just Henry? Tasselhoff? Come on. How many characters? Flint, there we go. That's a name for you. Oh, this is that NES game, isn't it? Uh huh. This is that one NES game that everyone hates. Yeah, I think it is actually. Yeah, so chat's saying. Are you just all falling off a cliff? This is right at the beginning of the game. They wouldn't let you do this right at the beginning, would they? Danny, are you? <laughs> the discs of milkshake will are gone, Danny. Now how are we going to get our discs? Wow, and we met all the characters just for that. Let's not go to the right oh then. God. I'm surprised they let you do that right at the beginning. Also, it starts you off in a useless room. That's cool. Yeah, I want to be, um... I want to be... Ricelin. I like his cereal. Riceland sounds like one of those cereals that's basically like twigs, and it's like really high in fiber. And you eat it, but you're just like, ugh. Oh, here we go. Combat! Yeah, yeah! No, I, j I just want to combat. Quit menuing me. Yeah, here we go. I think we're gonna win this one. Us is also a tier text joint, and the game is, uh, yeah. the game we're playing is Heroes of the Lance, and this is walking on by. The treasures are mine. I didn't think much of that, sorry. That was very good, no. Probably not the system to play it on. But, in better news, they also released an exclusive OutRun game. Oh. Not a Sega game. This is a U.S. Gold production. Outrun Europa. I mean, who needs Sega of Japan when you have Probe? Probe could be okay. Probe did alright things. They did Alien 3 on Genesis, they did uh, Die Hard Trilogy. But they also did a whole lot of other stuff. Hey, Danny. Uh huh. I don't know about this one. A bike left at the side of the road. Oh god, it's got story. Draw your gun. Danny. Someone stole a bike. Fuck that. Okay, so... This game is actually part of a larger story I have planned. Now keep in mind that this is the best looking US Gold motorcycle game at this point. And keep that in mind. We'll come back to that. Wait, I do have a gun! You're... Do. Why... Why do you have bullets? Oh yeah, what the hell? Jesus. Is this Road Rash with a gun? And the worst graphics I've ever seen? Oh, apparently this has Matt Furnace music. Okay, that's fine. Can I sketch this police car? I see. I can't skiss the police car, they don't like that. Wow, straight up game over. Well, let's start all the way over again, I guess. This is a weird one. Uh, anyone familiar with this? Is this a low point for the OutRun series? Because it kind of feels like it. I know one of the non-Sega OutRun games is supposed to be good. Was that OutRun 2019? That? In any case, I don't think it's this one. Yeah, it is weird seeing uh, OutRun with a kind of clear narrative path there. Yeah, usually you don't need much story in OutRun. It's just you got a Ferrari and you're gonna drive to the beach. Okay, multiple folks saying that OutRun 2019 is good. That's what I've heard, yeah. But this one... This is the one that really won people over to OutRun. Can't relate to a guy driving to the beach in a Ferrari. 
but I can relate to a guy shooting people on a motorcycle. Also, when do I get to shoot people? I'm hurrying. Another fun thing, this is one of those games that make you hold up to accelerate. Oh, I hate that. Because that's how they did it on the Amiga. That's how it works. Out of here, cops. Also, what OutRun game puts you on a bike? This isn't Bike Run. Yeah, like, what the hell? That's, that's very... That's not on brand. That that doesn't represent the Outrun brand as well as a cool car would. Yeah, Sega. Sign my petition if you want Sega to treat their IPs with respect. <laughs> Seems like a good use of everyone's time, Danny. <laughs> oh no, I went the wrong way. Your shield's low, and you ran into a bunch of uh, fences, so... You gotta find an on-ramp or something. Wow, the cop is stopping you. But you're just running around, just trying to injure people, I don't know why. This is not good. Even if I did have access to the gun, this wouldn't be good. There's a boat level in this game, JP Ron. No, no, no. This, this is, this is flush it. This is, this is sacrilegious to me. I am offended. I'm also offended, deeply. Mhm. Mm so are the cops. No. Oh. It's like a robot in the upper right with Union Jacks for eyes. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm... I am Britbot. <laughs> Next up, oh, good. We're back to the world of soccer. Hell yeah! Is this, is this one gonna have Striker, the the dog, not the cop? Well, let's find out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not showing up for the audience yet. Oh, oh that's man, no! that's a shame. Okay, I'm gonna have to let the uh, the Wait. intro loop then because it has this has a great splash screen. Oh, if it. Oh, I don't think you can see it. Let's oh, try that man. again. Let's okay. try that again. Let's see if the Elgato catches up this time around. Come on, Elgato. That's the best splash screen I've ever seen. It was a dude who was so hyped for soccer. Come on, Elgato. Come on, this time you gotta do it. There he yes! is. Yes! Look at him! Basking in the glory that is football. Oh, that's so good. Uh, we got another tier text game. I could still be... After the last game? <laughs> just... Just give it a chance. What are these teams? United, Rovers, Rangers, Wanderers? Well, it's the Palace versus the Forest, so... <laughs> Am I gonna be fighting like squirrels or something? <laughs> oh, you're the Palace? You're not the Forest? Oh, I see how it is. Palace is going to take down the forest once and for all. <laughs> Your days are numbered, Bambi. Ferngully, the last soccer game. Wow, it's a soccer game that looks like sensible soccer. Who could have ever seen this coming? Well, the radar is a little bit smaller than it was on Genesis. It sure plays a whole lot like the Genesis game, though. Which makes sense, because they're the same game and they're made by Teartex. Okay, so the original kickoff does predate Sensible Soccer, so maybe it's, you know... Okay. Maybe one ripped off the other. Could be. Or maybe it was just a general direction soccer games are going. I don't know. I just want to claim... I just want to accuse someone of ripping someone off. I'm not much up on my Sensi. Maybe I should be. We played that once. It was fun. Yeah, Sensi's good. Kickoff, Sensi. not really feeling it, though. A little slow. Also, it's a soccer game, so let's move on. Man, we might get through this whole lineup tonight. Oh my god. I've been really hauling ass all night. Speaking of hauling ass, how about that golf? This golf. Those golfers know how to haul it. Or tear tax. This music. 
This is the mo most milk toast music I've ever heard. It sounds like it's nervous to be heard. Oh, look at the way it draws in! Oh my god. That takes so long! So long! <laughs> Let's play it. I like this really shy music. I've got to make my music quiet so I don't wake up mom. I'm an ass novice. Okay, good luck to ass. Now drawing. Uh, let's punch it. Punch that ass. Oh, that didn't go far at all. Ah, uh, Danny, you can punch harder. Okay. And punch. Oh, right. It's like the Genesis game. You gotta hold the button. Don't, uh, don't tap it. Okay. I know what to do now. Yeah, we got this. Be quiet. I'm golfing. Okay. Also... Multiple people have said St. Andrew's ass. <laughs> Thank you. We'll make it this time. Shit. <laughs> Fuck. God damn it. Bullshit. There, finally. <laughs> it's a double bogey, according to BMO. <laughs> All right. Look, it only takes me about fourteen to fifteen shots to get in the hole. I'm just a novice. I'm not a professional ass. I'm just a novice ass. So not bad for ninety-one. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to good old nineteen ninety-two to visit an old friend, <gasps> Jimmy Pond. Good old Jimmy Pond himself. Oh, I love this guy. Can you ride? Can you fly? Can you stretch up high? Hell no, Jimmy, but you can. Another Mascot Friday favorite. I think this one we rated better than Bubsy. He's better than Bubsy. He's not terrible. There we go. Yeah, that's James Pond. He's a fish. They put him in a robot outfit. And they made a whole bunch of games about him for some unknown reason. I thought he was a frog, but you're right, he's a fish. Yeah, he's a fish. My entire life I've thought he was a frog! Oh my god, I have a lot to think about. Um, okay, what's the order you collect these items? I think the cake you get first. Oh my god. Let's see if this has a cheat code. And then... Hammer. Then Earth. And then Apple. And then this, and you become invincible. That's cool. That says cheat code from you to me. I mean, from me to you. Hey, soccer balls. And shoes. Soccer shoes? It's just random shit. It's an Amiga game, so that's what you do. Hey, what am I doing? I'm invincible. Hey, you can just ram through this game. Just, just run. Yeah, if there's one thing James Pond 2 and US Gold have in common, it's a love of being on as many platforms as possible. Hey, this looks not shit. Yeah, this looks good for a Master System game. As a play. Scrolling's decent. Uh, the controls are good. This plays just like the Genesis one, as far as I can see. Well, holy shit. He's a little bit slippery, but that's just how he is. Yeah, it's just James Pond. He's a fish! Of course he's slippery! You ever try to hold a fish? Not in the live one, no. What, what about one with a uh, wearing body armor? <laughs> if I saw a fish wearing body armor, I would leave. A snake in that present. There was a nightmare in that present. I saved the penguins. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, this is obviously scaled down if you're used to the 16-bit versions, but it's serviceable. If you must play James Pond, this is one of the ways you can do it. I'm just shocked this never came out on NES. Wait a minute, you've gone by soccer balls and golf clubs. Is this just like a commentary on U.S. Gold itself? Oh, maybe. <laughs> oh, 
Like, help us, we can't get away from sports. And hippos. Oh, this looks tasty. These cookies? I think so. Oh my god. Or maybe they're just like, uh, Twinkies. They look like furry mulatto Really, cookies. really fuzzy Twinkies. <laughs> Don't eat that, Danny! But Twinkies. Oh yeah, you can butt stomp things. Yeah, this game's alright. This game looks normal. I won't say no to a James Pond. He knows what he's doing. Look at him. I trust him. He's a trustworthy fellow. So that ad we mentioned up top, uh, Doc Future brought that into the public conscious this week. And everyone's talking shit on James Pond for ruining Sonic's time at the, uh, the old sock hop. I mean, it's not fair to, you know, Sonic is just like... He was there to get a shake, and suddenly this stretchy fish is all like, Oh, can you run? Can you fly? Can you stretch a pie? He's like, no, I'm out of here, because he doesn't want to deal with he that. He didn't even want to be recognized, much less challenged by a fellow mascot. <laughs> Do you think James Pond does that with the other mascots? Like, oh, totally. He's known for his antagonism. It's like the, the mascot bar scene, and he's not allowed in a lot of places. Hey, Bubsy, you know who can take more than one hit? Me, and I'm just a fish. You're an entire bobcat. <laughs> Do you think he's still doing this? Like, well, to, they're still they're still re-releasing Robocod, aren't they? Um, what did it come out on recently? Yeah, I do think they announced a port somewhat recently for something. Maybe Nintendo Switch? That wouldn't surprise me. If you want to play Robocod, if you have a video game system, congrats, you can play Robocod. Check it out. It's inoffensive. You know what else is inoffensive? Olympic Gold. Olympic, oh boy! Master System port of that one Genesis game. Once again, brought to you with the kind permission of the Coop. Thank you, Coop. Oh shit, look at this. That looked pretty good. That looked well animated. Was this, uh, was this the lead console for this? Did they just do a shitty port to Genesis or something? Hey, uh... I'll do the oh, mini the Olympics. the baby Olympics! But is Sharon there? Controversial. We'll find out. I love Sharon. I'm just a club. Are they letting, like, the sports club at the Olympics? Yeah, there you go. Oh, that fire looks good. This does look like it had effort put into it. Oh, see, and they're very clearly away from the flames. See, this is this seems like the better version. Mm-hmm. It just promotes safety. Alright, let's spin this dang hammer. <laughs> he let it go. I didn't even I didn't even do the input for that. The dude just decided, ah, fuck it. Round two. Meh. There. This being an Olympic game, it has very unconventional controls, as was the style at the time. Just try and play summer games, I dare you. Or winter games, for that matter. I went all the way to the Olympics just to half-heartedly throw the thing around my head and then toss it for 10 meters. <laughs> I'm sorry, Anderson. Randy Orton got the bronze, that's cool. Alright, archery. Oh no, it's the firing squad. I heard how shitty you were at that game. Hey. Hey, you fired it. <laughs> that arm is just coming in from off screen. <laughs> It's a two-man job. Also, why am I so shaky? I had like 20 Red Bulls. Hey, not bad! Alright, well, Red Bulls are the secret to archery, I guess. Okay, I'm being recommended a Cursed Croc ad, one sec. Is that the one where he eats everyone? Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, he, he does that. Are those... What are it is... Is that a gun? Yeah, I think the implication is that he ate Lara Croft. 
as well as uh, Crash Bandicoot. Or maybe it's Mario's gun, who knows. I'm done. I'm done with mascots. <laughs> well, I hope you're gonna be ready to deal with mascots again by the time Friday rolls around. Well, if I wanted to, I could play this forever, but luckily I don't want to. Olympic Gold! There's a bunch of systems you can play it on. Moving on. How about a real game? They don't make real games, do they? Is Star Wars a real game? Oh shit, sorry, Is sir. that real enough for you? So this one's kind of unusual. This is a port of the NES Star Wars. They brought it to both Master System and Game Gear. And to my eyes, at least, this looks better than the NES one. But I'll let you be the judge, the judge of that. Okay. You know the story. Mm -hmm. Civil War, Rebels... Luke uh, and Leia, Han shot first. Jabba's Jizz Band. <laughs> Excuse me. Look it up! Look <laughs> it up! Don't, don't encourage people to look up Jabba's Jizz Band. <laughs> it's, the name of, it's the name of the kind of music that they play. I'm, I'm not kidding. I am never going to let George Lucas forget that. Look it up in the Star Wars Encyclopedia. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, they are called Jizz... <laughs> they are called Jizz Whalers, yeah. <laughs> Look, Star Wars is a part of our cult culture. You can't question it. It is unimpeachable. I like, I like culture. It is part of our cult. It is absolutely part of our cult. Hey, this doesn't look like shit. Yeah. What the hell? And the S1 was a basic side-scroller with some other types of gameplay thrown in. You occasionally pilot the X-Wing and stuff like that, but mostly it's a slippery platformer. And in that sense, this is a good port. Luke is still just as slippery as he's ever been. There's some slowdown, there's some issues, but I'm pretty sure you could say this is an improvement. The graphics are more detailed, it may run better, I forget how well the NES version ran. And this first area is kind of an open world-ish sort of thing, where you gotta figure out where to go next. The hell is that? Some uh, kind of buffalo? They're, they're space buffaloes. Banthas, that's what we call them. Oh yeah. Space buffaloes. I bet you've never even managed the Star Wars wiki. The Wookiee wiki. <laughs> I have not, no. I haven't even been to Galaxy's Edge. So who's played the NES one? Is it good? I've never heard anything definitive about it. Uh, Arnold Rimmer mentions that it, it runs okay, but it gets really, really hard later. Mmm. I know everyone always talks about the Super Star Wars games, and those are okay. Yeah, oh. unfortunately this isn't the one that's true to the films where he turns into that radioactive scorpion. Ah, oh, very few games featured that scene. Mm-hmm. hell? This, this song. I like this. Luke is a hard-boiled detective. Frank it here. I like this. That's some good jizz. Good night, everybody! <laughs> uh, the version where uh, uh, Luke turns into a scorp- uh, uh, Darth turns into a scorpion is, uh, that's- who did that one? That was Namco. That was Namco's version of the game. Alex has now given up all pretense of reining me in. That's fine. Look, I just played like 30 US gold games yeah, in a you, row. Cut you, me a break. You've got US gold derangement uh, syndrome or whatever. <laughs> Derangement syndrome. I don't know, US Gold has given you beef brain. And... <laughs> I got the old beef brain. <laughs> I'm gonna make you play Hypnospace Outlaw, I swear to God. Okay. Well, good luck with that, I just uninstalled Steam. You'll never make me play a PC game, not on your life. I, 
I could play this. Assuming it, well, we already know it gets ridiculously difficult. Still, for a Star Wars game, not too bad for the time. You can play this on Master System in the UK and Genesis, or rather, uh, Game Gear. They released a US version as well. And apparently, uh, Limited Run Games did a re-release of the NES uh, Star Wars recently, That's right, so. they did! <laughs> that strikes me as really funny because that game's not rare or anything. But the real funny thing is a couple weeks ago they re-released Shadows of the Empire for the N64, a game I literally sold two months ago for seven bucks. <laughs> Only now you can get it in a special cartridge for 40. Cool. Star Wars. It always brings in the money. Gotta make money somehow. Now what does Strider 2 look like on the Master System? Uh... Let's find out, Tim Allen. Ah, <laughs> I too am get getting beef brain from US Gold. <laughs> we gotta finish this up. Me and Alex are getting beef brained hardcore. Oh man. He's little. Oh, he's a baby! And he throws ninja stars? Oh, look at him! A little angel! I love him! Oh, he's very awkward in this version. This must be his awkward teenage years. Oh, I love him, Joe! Oh, he's even floatier and more difficult to wrangle. How is that even possible? <laughs> I like that. That sound of a bird explode. <laughs> Jesus, they just blow right up. And your default weapon seems to be the ninja stars in this one. I know they had that in the Genesis one, but... Here it seems to be the default. Well, you would have never guessed this, but this is not great. Oh, for fuck's sake. Let's do that again. I'm gonna climb this tree. I believe in you. Here we go. Yeah! Tree climbed. But you see what I mean now about U.S. Gold porting these games to every system and making no compromises or changes. <laughs> That's kind of an issue, considering some of these games could have been... could have used a little bit of reconfiguring based on platforms. Aw, oh, this one gives you nice cartoon hearts. Aww. That's different. This almost makes more sense as this kind of bullshit 8-bit game. Compared to a 16-bit game. Would you say this is a better version? No. No, wow, I would not. Wow, that... This isn't a better anything. Oh, it hurts. It hurts so much. But lucky for us, we're in the last directory. We've entered 1994. The end is in sight, and we're going to play some championship hockey as exclusively released in Europe. I'm awake. <laughs> oh, it looks great! Oh, he looks like a... <laughs> oh, he looks so sunburned! Someone get him some aloe vera! Uh, the last directory was 92 and 93. I didn't mention that. Yeah, they combined them. Oh, these graphics. Mmm... Oh, man. Gosh, I wonder if this was originally a Game Gear game. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, wow. Maybe that's why it kind of looks so weird. Oh, this looks like oh, shit. dude, these characters. Oh, this audio's no good. <laughs> oh, this is just farting. Ooh. <laughs> They're just spinning and farting. This is 1994! 94! <laughs> Ah, uh, this is some Atari, like, 5600 shit. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm, this I'm in awe. Soundscape. I thought I knew what to expect from US Gold by this point, but boy, did this ever prove me wrong. Jesus. <laughs> Goal. Excuse me, I mean, brrrr. Uh, that's 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 hockey. This sucks. 
That is hockey. So that was apparently, according to Electric Boogaloo, supposed to be a port of NHL hockey on Sega Genesis. Excuse me? <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's... Wow. Well, we let's find to? out what the Incredible Hulk looked like on the Master System. Uh, do we have to? Even as late as 94, 95, they still insisted on bringing these games to as many systems as possible. He's hangry. I was glad that they revealed the hangry Pokemon today. I, I relate. Oh, yeah! This looks like a Game Gear game. Well, I think it very well may be. A lot of these games were Game Gear exclusive here in the States, but they ported them to Master System in the UK. Oh, the sequence is slower and more methodical. It's better animated. Maybe the game's better. Mm, game seems to be mostly the same. You're faster. You are very fast. That feels appropriately, honestly, because Hulk would be taking big strides. Man, you feel more agile on this one. Look at those frames of animation. Where did you go? Look at that toned butt. And we're in the sewer. That was fast. Yeah. Start to sewer, uh, approximately five seconds. Here's Hulk's gun. <sighs> Hulk, you don't need that. You are just a mass of meat. <laughs> Has he got the meat brain? From playing too much US gold? This is way easier to control and better paced than the Genesis one. Color me surprised. Genesis one honestly felt a little bit too plotting. It felt like they wanted him to just be kind of slow. Make you feel him stomping around. Here they don't care. And it kind of is a better game for it. Maybe we should rank this separately in Mascot Friday. I... Whole cake construction sites. He is just... Well, these these robots are taking the good old uh, blue-collar jobs, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. Stinking robots. Well, now he's only a, a shirtless dipshit. With a gun. Oh, God. Oh, I'm out of bullets. I should have uh... picked up more bullets. Moving right along. I have one game I want to conclude this stream on, and we're not going to play it yet. Okay. Instead, we're going back to the Olympics. God! <laughs> I am sick of being at the Olympics. <laughs> We've gone to the Olympics like 12 times just over the course of this one stream. God! These are the worst looking flags I've seen in my life. <laughs> I love them! No way! You really couldn't have dedicated like four more pixels to each one. Well, it's probably for the game gears, why? Yeah, true. Okay. Okay, the mascots are still here at least. Your name is James Sherlock. I couldn't control any of that. Well, let's luge. Uh, we luge automatically. <laughs> uh, hmm. Did I set it to simulate an Olympics instead I... of actually play in the Olympics? Alright, these are the times that you'd get if you performed in the Olympics as an Olympic-level athlete. I hope you found this information valuable. Thank you. Sir. I'll try one more time to start a real game. What did it do? Does it just default to no-play mode? Multiple people calling it a uh, Olympic management game. <laughs> yeah. Just look over the times and be like, hmm, good times. Good work, everyone. Yeah, I can't 
control anything here. Maybe this game is not NTSC compatible. I know there's a few Master System games like that. Mm. Well, that's unfortunate. I wanted to show off all 27 Olympic games that they made. Maybe some other time. Oh god, maybe you do have to push the pause button. Oh Christ. Yeah, I bet they do that to you. In better news, let's go back to the World Cup. More like World Pup. Because cause the dog. I'll let it slide. Okay, good. There he is. Striker is good. Okay, this is nice. Yeah, it looks okay, aside from the stupid pictograph menus. Well, someone made a good point earlier that pictographs are easier than translating something over and over and over in different languages. That's a really good point, actually, because oh, so, many space, of these, yeah. so many of these games did have to be released in multiple regions. Mm -hmm. Wow, I finally understand why they did it. I still don't like it, though. Oh, I getcha. I ah. don't want to rename the USA. It doesn't work. That's a damn shame. What do any of these do? This one? <laughs> Question mark and a ROM? That's what I'm <laughs> that's what I'm thinking right now. Question mark and a ROM. That's, I think that's our brand in general. Hey, here, you here go. we go. Oh, they're little babies. Wow, they zoom. It's little pocket characters. Three pixel flags in that other game, but look at that rendered quarter. Oh, Someone loved the fuck out of that quarter. Am I dead? I died. Oh man. I'm of death, uh, 854. Call it. Oh, you just did. Yep. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's a good question. Do they use U.S. currency in the World Cup, like for the quarter flip, for the flip? Oh, like, right, yeah. Is, is, this... it, is it the currency based on whatever country they're in? Possibly. I have got to know. That's something I've never considered. Yeah, wow, good question. Broadening my horizons tonight. Hmm. Okay, so for one final exercise to wrap up this stream, based on the last several games you've seen, including this one, consider how shitty they look. Just how low effort... How garbage. Consider that hockey game, specifically. Think about that, and then think about what it would be like if the same publisher made a port of Road Rash for the Sega Master System. No, no. What would that look like? Danny, no. That no. would probably be the worst game ever made, right? I don't want to see this. In fact, I'm calling the stream now. Well, too uh, bad, because we're going to finish off the stream with it right now. It's Road Rash for the Sega Master System ugh, in Europe. Fuck. Your final punishment. Mm, well, You've I've... seen Strider. You've seen 20 billion soccer and Olympic games. Danny, why are we being punished? Can US Gold make a port of Road Rash for the Sega Master System? Well, it's Probe, so they're one of the better developers they worked with. Yeah. I like this. Okay. Title screen looks good. The music was ported by Chrysalis, so Matt Furness. It's good. Hey, I like this. Let's go this year in Nevada. Danny, if this turns out to... Oh my god, I love Biff. Oh my god, Biff. Biff, that cheesy grin. Ah, he's great. And okay. when you get to it, the game looks like... It looks amazing. What Look at hell? this. This is an 8-bit system right here. Think of what NES games look like. NES racers. That kind of simulated uh, scaling. None of them had dips in the road or hills, and yet, look at this! What the fuck, man? This is... decent! I'd go so far as to call this good. I played this earlier today and I was amazed. They kept so much from the Genesis one, including being uh, run over by cars and having to go back to your bike. Let's punch out Rude Boy. Ah, uh, Rude Boy's been on your ass, man. So I thought we'd end this on a good note. U.S. Gold 
they were a good business company. They were good at business. They were good at making money. Not necessarily at making good games. But every so often, some kind of fluke would occur and something like this would come out. This never got released in the States, of course. Master System was way dead by 95. But if you were in the UK, you could buy a surprisingly faithful port of Road Rash for the Sega Master System. From US Gold, of all people. What I'm wondering is how? Like, this shouldn't even be possible. <laughs> it's playable, even. Alex just sitting here in awe. I just, I can't believe this! Of this impressively winding road. This looks normal! This looks like a video game! Well, it usually all comes down to budget and time constraints, and for this particular case, I think they gave Probe enough time and budget. And this is what they could do, in the best case. Unfortunately, with US Gold, the best case was not often possible. <laughs> and that's how you ended up with so many Olympic and soccer games. Just real quick, easy games to put on shelves. Now here's what I wanted from US Gold. I wanted a port of Skitchen. Unfortunately, that never happened. Oh man, that would've been great. That would've looked amazing. Uh, uh, Black from chat mentioned earlier that, uh, US Gold, since it got bought out by IDOS, and IDOS got bought out by Square Enix, technically, it's Square Enix now. Yep, so. US Gold, technically, Square Enix. Part of their whole brand. So start pet start petitioning Square if you want to see Strider 2 come to modern platforms. Oh yeah, never explicitly mentioned it, but Capcom did eventually make their own Strider 2, and they called it Strider 2. Like, they didn't even acknowledge that the US Gold one ever happened. There's like, that didn't it? No, that was... Hinjo, it does not exist in this universe. <laughs> it's always funny whenever that happens. Like, if they ever brought back Renegade, would it be Renegade 4? Would they acknowledge the one where he went back in time and beat up on Captain Caveman? Captain Caveman was in the game, by the way. Excuse me? Yeah. Alright, some confirmation on that coin toss question. Properly speaking, according to Abby, any coin or even a worthless referee's token will do. Mm -hmm. uh, but for a World Cup match, they usually use special commemorative coins made for the occasion. And I forgot, I apologize, it scrolls fast, I didn't catch your name, but I did see discussion about how um, in, uh, in the Olympics and other things, there have been controversies about which coin to use in which country. Oh, really? So, yeah, that is it, a point of discussion. It's usually the coin of the hosting country, but yeah. Could I guess one. that would piss people off if you brought a quarter into like uh, Switzerland or something. It'd be like, what the hell? Are Swiss quarters not good enough for you? They're made of chocolate. Oh, delicious. Yeah. They have chocolate based currency over there. Oh, because it's so cold they never melt. That makes sense. Yeah. It never, it never reaches over 85 degrees in Switzerland. Do not correct me. I do not like facts. <laughs> it's the perfect country where everything is made of chocolate and the weather is always nice. Mm -hmm, that's, my, that's my stereotype about Switzerland. <laughs> is this a harmful stereotype? I don't think so. Okay, GD Car, uh, it's uh, the coin is usually the hosting or the player nation or neutral third party. Okay. So Switzerland's uh, coins, I guess, or chocolate coins. I win. You, you did it. That might be the first Road Rash round I've ever won, and it's on Master System. Yeah, Smebble, this is pretty chill for a violent biker game. Yeah, game, they but, they kind of had to dial back the pacing a little bit, but just... It, it's playable. It looks good, even. How and why did that happen? I don't know, but it's a miracle, and it exists. And best of all, it's NTSC compatible, so you can play it on your flashcard if you want. So if you ever want to play a Road Rash that sh shouldn't exist, by all means, play the Master System version. It comes recommended. Alright, I'm gonna try and launch myself from my bike. Okay. Come on. I think I have to wait for oncoming traffic. Alright, good luck, Danny, regarding uh, dying. Thank you. I just want to see how far I'll let you run once you're off your bike. You just, really... 
Just the variation in the road terrain is good too. Yeah. It does a great job of capturing elevation, which no 8-bit racing game could do as far as I know. Doing a really good job of not getting hit. This place good. Are there any cars? Here comes one. Alright. I missed it. Oh no! <laughs> I totally blew it. How about we just wait for it? Come on, car. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Nothing, officer! I was just sitting here obeying the law. <laughs> before I got hit by a car! <laughs> you got hit by a car! <laughs> oh, this is the worst day ever. Oh, boo. Well, we ended up getting arrested on the Master System to add insult to injury. And that's Road Rash for Master System, and that, in short, is U.S. Gold's Reign of Terror on both the SMS and the Genesis. What do we think? A lot of ups, mostly downs. Yeah. A few like, ups, mostly downs, Like 90% downs. Uh, if you love soccer, if you love the Olympics, boy, have they got you covered. If you love good games, uh, maybe you want to look somewhere else. Special thanks go to JP Ronnie, who suggested this week's uh, poll winner. Thank you. Thanks for suggesting U.S. Gold. They had an interesting run on SMS and uh, Genesis, but not many games I would recommend. Still, glad to end it on a good note with Road, Road Rash. Definitely check that out if you want to see what the Master System's capable of. For now, my brain is mush and we must end. We must. Thanks for watching. These have been certified U.S. Gold. Every last one of them. All the 30 to 40 games we played. Gold. You, U.S. Gold. Me, I'm U.S. Gold too. A completely gold stream from top to bottom. Just pure gold. Pure strain gold. There, we brought it back full circle. Brought it back full circle. <laughs> thanks for watching, and thanks to our patrons for voting in this week's poll. Not sure how U.S. Gold ended up winning, but we did it. We went through with it. We had to do it. The 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 patrons demanded it. If you want a say in what we stream, head to patreon.com slash retropals, pitch in five bucks a month, you'll get access to our weekly polls, where you can tell us to play US gold games if you really hate us that much. Uh, I had fun. <laughs> that was that was fun. It was, was a, fun. It wasn't especially enlightening, like I I kinda knew what to expect from the beginning, but just seeing how bad some of those games were, I kind of, it's just the kind of thing you have to experience on your own. It's kind of spectacular. It is. Next week, not sure if there's going to be a poll, though. So uh, hold on to your hats for that. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be testing out a whole bunch of consoles that we've uh, recently received here at Retro Pals HQ. Mm -hmm. And depending on my findings, we're going to stream one of those next Wednesday. Oh. To be determined which one. We'll find out. It will be a system we've never streamed before, whichever it is. So please look forward to that. I'm excited. Alex, wrap us up. I'll look for a host. Okay, we're also on YouTube at youtube.com slash retropals. We post highlights of our Wednesday and a few other streams there, along with uh, original scripted content like our Nintendo 64 Chronicles series, which is getting well, new episodes coming out on Monday, right? Mm-hmm. Coming right. out on Monday for public, or you can back us on Patreon to watch it right now. It is a 13-minute epic. Everything you always wanted to know about Pilot Wing 64, but were too afraid to ask. And more. And Much more. It's good. It, check it out and uh, get look forward to it if you're if you follow our YouTube channel and follow our YouTube channel. It's good. Yeah, it's got videos. Not? You like videos, right? What else are you gonna watch? The the world around you? No videos. <laughs> you gonna listen to the radio? What are you? No. What are you? This is, no. It's not 1982. Come on. Stick with the times. All right. Who is streaming here? All right, Slow Beef is playing some Bloodstained, an excellent game. Ooh. Uh, we got some other folks playing here. Oh, Toad is doing a recap of his first few games that he's played for the NES, NES Blitz. Now, what Toad has been doing is he's doing that thing where you go through the NES catalog and finish every game. A few people have attempted that. Mexican Runner recently... Uh, not recently, but a couple years ago, did in fact finish every single one of them. That was so cool. But Toad is attempting to one-up him because each of the games that he uh, completes for this challenge, he also speedruns with the aim of getting a top five time. So he's done that for about 30 games now, and he's recapping all the uh, the record times that he's set so far. So I think we'll host him. 
enjoy that. Uh, be amazed that he speed ran a golf game because that's what he's featuring right now. He's got a lot of those to cover. Good luck to him. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on Friday for Mascot Friday. Please look forward to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, see you around. See ya, folks.